This is the 8-bit Do 2 controller, and yes, it is the smallest Nintendo Switch controller to date. And it only felt natural to talk about this after talking about the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is aka the smallest Nintendo Switch that you can buy to date. I love this thing. There are, are a lot of reasons to use it, but I have one huge problem when I'm gaming on it, and that is I have huge man hands, so it makes it very difficult to use this controller on the go. The first thing that I noticed when I was unboxing the 8 Zero 2 was its sheer size. Honestly, guys, it is absolutely ridiculously small, especially when you put it in comparison to an Nintendo Switch Pro controller or even a Nintendo Joy-Con. It is absolutely small in comparison. It makes it very easy to lose. Thankfully, there is this wristband that is included with the packaging, which kind of makes it a little bit easier to keep track of things, but overall, I still find this as something that could be very easily lost in the grand scheme of things. The face controllers, they feel very comfortable. They're very clicky. They feel exactly like something that you would expect from 8 Do. Granted, it is a relatively inexpensive controller in comparison to the rest of the lineup, especially when you compare it to the SN30 Pro 2 or the 8 Do Ultimate Controller. The D-pad on this thing is actually really awesome. I'm actually kind of surprised at how good a D-pad is for such a small form factor. This is up there with the 8 Ultimate Controller or the SN30 Pro 2. It just feels really, really good and puts the D-pad or at least non-existent D-pad on the regular Switch to shame, as well as the D-pad on the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. Having something that is this well-built in such a small form factor is honestly a triumph. Kudos, 8 Do. When using a controller of this size though, one would think with the buttons that are missing, how am I supposed to get home? How am I supposed to use the ZL and ZR buttons when there are physically no ZL or ZR buttons on this controller? Thankfully, Apidu was kind enough to kind of figure out a way of doing that. For instance, if you wanted to go onto the home screen menu, you actually push down on the D-pad and select at the same time. If you wanted to use ZL and ZR, you actually use the select button and the start button at the same time. When you push those though, it fires both ZL and ZR on whatever game that you are playing. So if those respective buttons have different functions, then you're pretty much screwed. You're going to fire both functions at the same time or whichever one is registered onto the Nintendo Switch while you're gaming. I was able to connect this onto an Android phone and I did use it to play some 2D games on Xbox Game Pass. So using xCloud, I was able to play Shredder's Revenge without any problems at all. In fact, it was actually relatively smooth and pretty much seamless. Now, when using this for Raspberry Pi or Steam or whatever it may be, it definitely leaves a lot to be desired in terms of the functionality aspect of things. Same thing with the Nintendo Switch. You're not going to be able to use this controller on a 3D plane. It just isn't really doable. You're able to still move your character and do things as such, but whenever you're trying to execute complex tasks that are out of the scope when it comes to these buttons, for example, moving the camera or clicking R3 or clicking L3, it's just not something that you can do. The more and more that I use this controller, the more I realize how uncomfortable it was. This is great for short spurts of playing as you're going. If you wanted to go ahead and just play something on your phone while you're waiting at the doctor's office or whatever it may be, this is great to go ahead and have or in the middle of your commute. Obviously, of course, it would be a little bit more comfortable if you had some sort of stand or whatever it may be to hold your Nintendo Switch or your phone or whatever it is that you're using to make this actually usable. But when it comes down to it, I just don't see this as something that I would use outside of its novelty factor. One of the biggest drawbacks when it comes to using the Zero Two is that it is charged using a micro USB. And for Frankly, I don't really mind it too much per se, but at this point in this day and age, everything is charged with USB-C. It just should be the standard across the board at this point. Not all USB-Cs are created equally, don't get me wrong. Some have different voltages and whatnot, but at the end of the day, it should just be USB-C at this point. The controller itself has a glossy front to it, which is a bit of a concern for me because this is supposed to be a controller that you're supposed to take on the go, that you're supposed to be pretty much connecting it to a keychain or throwing it in your backpack and taking it as you game on a commute or whatever it may be. I could just see this being scuffed up and just messed up very, very quickly. On the back of the controller, there are instructions about connecting the gamepad itself to different various platforms or consoles or whatever it may be. And I could definitely see that being essentially rubbed off as time progresses. Don't get me wrong, this is a relatively inexpensive gamepad, but at the end of the day, you want something that will last you a little bit longer when it comes to gaming on the go. Speaking of the backside of the controller, I wish that there was a little bit more of a grip to it or something, I don't know, maybe bumps similar to the Ape Duke Ultimate Controller or even the Xbox Series X or S controller, because I just wanted something that would allow me to actually have a grip on it. It felt like it was falling out of my hands and just very easy 
easy to just slip out without the intention of losing grip on it. When it comes to battery life, I'm not expecting a lot when it comes to something so small. I mean, there's only so much of a battery that you can fit into the, such a small form factor, but surprisingly enough, it lasts seven to eight hours on a single charge. You can go from zero to 100% in one to two hours of connecting it, again, from that old school micro USB. But at the end of the day, there's nothing to complain about, especially when you're planning on taking this on a commute or gaming on the go. So who exactly is the 8BitDo024? Frankly, that leaves a lot of things up in the air because honestly, I could recommend this to anyone that is interested in playing either 8-bit games or 16-bit games. But when it comes to playing 3D games, it just doesn't really work well. You're missing a whole different access when it comes to playing and using this as a controller. There is a novelty aspect to this, guys. And frankly, because it is so inexpensive, it's kind of just cool to have. But if you're looking to have something as your main controller, this is not it. I would not recommend this as a replacement. This is more of just a novelty thing. This is something that is just extra. This is just something that is there to just have and kind of show off with your friends. Maybe throw in an extra controller if you want to go ahead and throw in somebody to play a 2D game. If you're playing a 3D game or anything that requires analog input, this just isn't it and it is not going to cut it. Now that you know my thoughts on the smallest Nintendo Switch controller that is out there, if you want to hear my thoughts on the smallest Nintendo Switch, the Switch Lite, click this video right over here. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below and I will see you on the next one. Until next time, guys. Peace.